In this video, I'll show you how to program your digital radios to encrypt your voice connection between either two radios or to an entire group of radios. For this video, we're going to be using TYT MD390 GPS radios. Start by plugging your radio into your computer, loading up the CPS MD390 software, and then click the yellow left arrow where it says read. This will import all the settings from your radio, including some basic information. Click on General Setting. You want to give your radio a unique name, so we're going to call this Radio Radio 1, and you have to give it a, a random generated radio ID, digital ID. If it's 8 characters long, it should start with 16, and I like to end it with 001 if this is Radio 1. That makes it easy to program extra radios when we go to do Radio 2 and such. Make sure monitor type is set to Open Squelch. Make sure backlight light time is not set to Always. Defaults to 5 seconds. Uh, 15 seems more reasonable. Always is just the way it's set to do this demo video. Uh, that will kill your battery very quick. Now, there's no point in encrypting your phones if you're going to leave this programming password blank or leave these other default passwords in the software. If you do, anybody that plugs your phone into a computer can get your encryption key. So you want to create a strong password for PC programming and a strong radio password. This means nobody will be able to see or change the settings on the radio without typing in this password. And then power on password means after you turn the radio on, nobody would be able to use it unless they type in this password. So that gets annoying after a while, but for maximum security, that could be useful. And then these text strings down here, that's every time you turn the radio on, that's what it shows on the screen. So you can put your name or your group name, uh, whatever you want in those uh, areas. Menu item. This is where manufacturers hide features from the radio, either in the menu or just features in general. So what you want to do is put a check mark in every box on this screen to enable all the features of the radio. Under button definitions, this is more personal preference, but this is how I like to do it. So long press duration is set to one second. Side button one is the small button above the PTT or push to talk button on the left side of the radio. And button two is the small button below the PTT button. So you can see under short press, I have them both set to unassigned. This is so that when you're taking the radio off the charger, or if you're taking it out of your pocket and you accidentally press one of the buttons, it doesn't change any settings on the radio. And then for long press, so when you hold down the top button for more than one second, it's going to start auto scanning the channels. And we'll talk about that when we go to set up the channel list. Or if you long press the bottom button, it's going to zone toggle. Anytime you see the word zone, think of it as a channel group or a channel list. So that'll make it easier to understand in the future. So anytime you see the word zone, that's a group of channels or a list of channels. That's it for this screen, a text message. Now, even with encryption enabled, text messages are not encrypted. So it's not a safe way to communicate between radios or to an entire group if you're planning on counting on the encryption. If you do like to use text messages, you can set up commonly used phrases here with a hotkey numbers. Of course, uh, you can type out an entire text message just using the keypad of the phone as well. Privacy setting. Anytime you see the word privacy, that means encryption in the software and in the radio. So anytime you see the word privacy, they're talking about encryption. So you can see under enhanced, you're going to need to know that for later. So under enhanced, under key one, we have our encryption key. This encryption key is a randomly generated encryption key, and I've put a link to the website that can generate perfect encryption keys that are compatible with these radios. So this is the encryption key I've done. You can have extra encryption keys for different call groups or different radios, but I found that if everything uses the same encryption key, it's really simple to program radios. So that's privacy settings. So remember, anything to do with privacy is encryption, and the encryption type we're using is called enhanced, and we're using key one. So make sure you remember that for later. Okay, digital contacts. Super important. Digital radios will communicate with nothing unless they're part of a call group. So if you get this wrong, that's why the radios can't talk to anybody. Our call group, that's what this is called. So our call group, we're going to call it test. Every time you transmit or receive, it'll say the name of the group on the radio. The call type is group call. And the call ID is a randomly generated number 
between 2000 and 9990. So it has to be less than 9990, but it has to be more than 2000. So some number in between there. And I like to start it with a zero at the end for the first contact so that if you set up extra contacts, you could do like 9961, 9962, 9963, and it makes it easier. Now, you can create extra groups of radios. So if you had kind of different groups of employees, you could group all their radios in separate groups, uh, sales, support, what have you. Or you can put radios in as contacts as well. So if we added a new contact and we called it Radio 2 because we're programming Radio 1, so we want to put Radio 2 in Radio 1's contact list. So we're going to call it Radio 2, and the call type is going to be private call, not group call, and the ID is going to be 9961. Now, when we go on Radio 1 and you look up the address book on it, you'll see Radio 2 in there, and you can create a private call between you and Radio 2 instead of the whole group. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on group calling for this video, so we're just going to make a group called test, and we'll use that for doing our calling. Uh, under group list one, when you create your call group, it's going to show up on the left here. So, you know, test would have been over here and you just have to move it to the right. So it's a member of the group. So whatever name you give your call group, add it to the right hand side here. So it's under the group list and you can rename group list one to whatever you want to call your group as well. I just left mine as default. So we're going to skip over zone information because remember zone is a group of channels or a list of channels. So we're going to skip over zone information and go right to channel information because you have to configure all your channels before you can configure your groups or even your scan list. So let's have a look. So there's 44 channels in this list, 22 digital and 22 analog. So let's have a look at the first one. So in your software, it'll be called channel 01 or whatever. So what you want to do is you want to rename it to whatever you want to call your channel. So I called mine FRS, D for digital, and this is going to be channel one. The frequency I got from a website, which is in a link in the description. So it has a list of all the FRS channels and you just copy and paste the frequencies into the boxes here. You can see we have it set to digital. Over on the right hand side here, this is the important bit where it says contact name. You have to pick your call group. So whatever you called your call group, we called ours test. You have to pick that under contact name and then under group list, you want to pick whatever you renamed your group to. Mine's just called group list one. Color code and repeater slot don't matter. Those are for repeaters, which we're not going to use. Privacy, remember that's talking about encryption. So you have to change that. It defaults to none. So you want to change that to enhanced because that's the encryption type we did. And encryption key number is what that's saying. And we put our encryption key in key one. That's what we're going to pick, key one. And the other thing is allow talk around. So I believe what this feature is, digital radios like these are designed to talk to repeaters to relay digital signals, but you need a license to be able to use repeaters. So with this checked on, it allows radio to radio communication. So without this checked on, uh, your radios will just beep and say they can't connect to a repeater. But with this checked on, it works perfectly uh, radio to radio without a repeater. So that would be the first channel configured. And then what you can do is you can click add 43 more times after you've configured the first channel. And that'll give you your 44 channels. And what you can do is you can right click on the first one and choose copy and then right click on the next one and choose paste. Basically do that for all the digital channels. All you have to do is change the name and update the frequency for whatever's supposed to be for that channel. All the rest of the settings are the same. And then when you get down to analog, it's a little different. So let's get down to analog. So there's our first analog channel. So you can see it's set to analog, the name we put at A for analog. The frequency is exactly the same as the digital channel one. But you see here where it says scan list, we've added it to a list. So the digital channel, so if we look at a digital channel, you can see it says scan list none, but the analog channel says scan list, whatever your scan list is called now. If you haven't renamed it, it'll be called scan list one. That's fine. So every analog channel, when you set it up, you want to add it to that scan list. So choose it at the bottom. Now let's go have a look at that scan list. So we can see under scan list, I've already renamed mine. Yours would be called scan list one. So I renamed mine to FRS analog. And you want to take all the analog channels from the left and add them on the right. So you can see there's FRS analog channel one all the way down to channel 22. 
and set this TX designated channel to last active channel. So what this means is, remember up here for our button definition, we set auto scan for the long press on the top button. When you long press on that button, it's gonna go through all of these channels and scan them over and over and over and over and look for anybody that's talking on these channels. Now, when it hears somebody talking, it's gonna stop on that channel for a bit so you can hear what the person's saying, but then it's, you know, after, you know, half a second or a second or whatever, it's gonna continue on. Now, if you missed what channel that was on or, or you didn't get to the radio in time, all you have to do is press the push to talk button and it'll snap back to the channel that it last heard communication on. So that's kind of a cool feature. So there's no point scanning the digital channels because unless somebody had your encryption key and your talk group ID, you would not hear anything on the digital. So there's no point putting those in the auto scan, but the analog FRS channels, that means this digital radio can communicate with old, you know, analog FRS radios, you know, your FRS radios from Walmart or what have you, uh, this radio can communicate with them on the analog channels. So that's it uh, for scan list and then our channel groups. Zone information, so that's a group of channels. Now, the radio can only hold 16 channels in each of its memory slots. That's why we can't put all 22 FRS channels in one group. So I've created a group, so FRSD, FRS Digital, and it's got the old FRS list, so channel one to channel 14. And then I put FRS Digital Expanded or Extended, and those are the new FRS channels, so channel 15 to 22. Um, so those are digital, and then we have analog as well, so FRS Analog 1 to 14, and then FRS Extended uh, Analog, channel 15 to 22. And remember, with our button long press, we can toggle between all the zones. So when you long press the bottom button, it'll switch between all four of those groups. So you can switch between analog and digital and the extended channels uh, or the normal ones. Now the order of the channels is important. Whichever one is first is the one the radio will default to when you turn it on. And whatever channel is first in this box is what channel the radio defaults to. So my radio defaults to FRS digital, the extended channel list. So it'll start on channel 15. There's going to be a lot less traffic on channel 15 to 22 because those are the new unlocked channels. So I wanted it to start there and I wanted it to start on the digital encrypted connection. So that, that's where it's starting. If you wanted it to start on analog FRS channel one, so if you're using the new digital radio with compatibility with old analog, you would want it to start on FRS analog 01. So you'd have to put that at the top of the list. So that's it. So we've set up all of our groups, our scan list, all of our channels, everything's good to go. We're ready to program the radio. So when you're ready, you're going to click the red right arrow for write, and then that's going to burn all these settings to the radio. Now, when you're ready to program radio number two, just unhook radio one, plug in radio two, and you're going to update the radio name to radio two, and you're going to increase the radio ID by one. So instead of 001, it's going to be 002 at the end, and then you're going to click write, and that's going to burn these settings to radio two. And it's the same thing for radio three, just call it radio three, increase the radio ID by one. So we're gonna call it three, click right, and then boom, it's gonna set up radio three, super duper easy. You can do that for as many radios as you want. So you can see, you know, all the hard part is programming the first radio. Once the first radio is done, then that's it. When you're done, you can save your settings. They'll always be in the radio unless it like gets wiped or whatever, but you can save your settings here so that, you know, you have all the stuff that you just programmed in. All right, that's pretty much it for the software. Now I'll give you a short demo of how the radios themselves work. And then I think you'll be ready to have digitally encrypted audio. This is a demo of how the digital phones can communicate together, both encrypted and unencrypted, and how they communicate with older analog FRS radios. So the radio in the center is an analog radio. And right now, all three are on FRS channel one. This one, obviously analog. These ones are digital. This one is currently unencrypted. And this one is encrypted. I left this phone unencrypted on channel one so I could, I could demonstrate how it sounds on an analog radio. I'm gonna turn down the volume on this radio and then we're gonna push the transmit button on this radio. And you hear, you hear that crazy ticking noise? 
That's all you ever hear. Even though this is unencrypted, it's digital on this channel. So an analog radio, all it ever hears is ticking, no voice. I'll talk into this just so you can hear it. I'll step away. So no audio comes through at all from the digital to the analog radio. Now, if this radio is communicating with this radio, their encryption keys or settings don't match currently. So this one is unencrypted and this one is encrypted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this volume up to six and then I'm going to take this encrypted radio to the other room and I'm going to say this is a test. This is just a test. This is only a test. And, and you're going to hear what it sounds like, you know, with the encryption garbling the audio. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to step into the other room. So you can hear how crazy that sounds with the encrypted audio. It's almost like you can still tell it's a human or a person talking, but it's totally garbled. You know, nothing comes out whatsoever. So that's the digital. Now, a cool feature is if we take this analog FRS radio and we transmit with it, you can see it doesn't affect the digital radios at all. Even if I talk into it, test, 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 nothing comes out of the digital radios, but if you look on the top of the digital radios, you see there's an, an LED there. So when there's uh, noise or interference or traffic on the channel, you can see that LED lights up green. So if you see that LED light up green, it means there could be interference on this channel. So switch to another FRS channel that's free. So that's kind of a cool feature. So no matter who's chatting on the analog, you don't hear it uh, on the digital, but you can still tell if there's going to be interference with your digital signal because that green light on the top. So that's kind of a cool feature. If I move these to channel two, they both have the correct encryption key in them. So they match. So if I talk out of this one, then you can see it comes out of that phone no problem and you can see the group name and it also has the id of the phone that's transmitting remember we can long press on the bottom key to change what group we're in so if i long press on that we'll see now we're in analog and it's on frs channel 2 for analog so if we switch our frs radio to channel two. Now they'll be able to communicate with each other as well. So if I transmit out of here, test, 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 test. This is just a test. It is only a test. It works fine, both from this radio because it's an analog channel two. And then from this radio, I can transmit as well. Test, test, test. Oh, might help if I turn the volume up. Test, 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 test. This is just a test. So you can see in analog mode, they communicate perfectly fine with FRS radios. No encryption, of course, in analog mode. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think that's about it.